Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Grey Board Gamer here with the continuation of my playthrough of Eldritch Horror by Fantasy Flight Games. We have a lot going on. Three open gates, monsters everywhere, active mythos card, mysteries that need to be solved. Let's get right into it. Before we start our player action phase, I'm going to reinstate Norman Withers. As our lead investigator, I think it was a mistake to take that title away from him, blaming him for the few bad turns that we had. We're going to start with Norman. Now the first thing I want to do is use the action on his player card that says I can spend two clues to discard one monster on a space containing a gate. And then I'm going to use his passive ability along with that. It says once per round, you may spend one sanity in place of spending one clue. So what I will do is I will spend one clue, and then I will spend one of his sanity in place of spending a clue to give me a total of two, which allows me to use his action and discard a monster on a space containing a gate. And we're going to get this star spawn out of Rome so we no longer have to deal with it. For Norman's second action, I want to get him close to Tunguska, so we'll move him one space to that seaside town in India. For Kachi, we'd like to get her out of Tunguska for now. Maybe we want to move her to somewhere where she can improve her lore, maybe. I would like to get her to Tokyo because there it is a possibility of defeating monsters but I can't get her there in one move she only has a two in influence so maybe I'll I'll do that I'll send her to Istanbul so I'll move her one space use her rail ticket to get her into Istanbul for her first action now she doesn't need to rest, she's at full on both. I will test her influence in Istanbul. I took a look at the reserve. There's not anything there that I really would like for her to try and get. In place of that, I'm going to use her player action to look at the top two gates. There are only two gates. We have a red gate in Shanghai and a red gate in Sydney, so they're both red. We'll put those back on the tab. Let's see. We'll put Shanghai on top because it's closer. And Sydney further away. We'll put it on the bottom. Jim Culver's in San Francisco being run down by the Hound of Tindalos. We're going to need more clues. We'll move Jim to the space with the clue. And we're going to go ahead and test his influence to see if there's any items we can pull out of this reserve so we can draw more. Again, after looking at Jim's situation, I changed my mind. I'm not going to test his influence. He only has two health and two will. I'm going to rest him. And then by resting him, it gives me a chance to get rid of his madness. So we'll go ahead and rest Jim. Regain one health and one sanity, and then he'll be up to three health and three sanity each, and then we can roll to see if we can get rid of his hallucinations right now. In order to get rid of Jim's hallucinations, we need to roll a five or a six to overcome this mental torment he's going through. And it didn't work. Jim is still haunted by his hallucinations. Mark Harrigan's here in Rome with this gate, but it's a red gate, and our omen track is already on the red gate. So it's going to take three more times around before this gate in Arkham, this gate in Rome, and the two gates we know that are in the stack are going to become a threat to us as far as moving the Doom track. So I'm going to move him into London, but before I do that, I want to test his influence because he's hurt pretty bad. I want to see if I'm able to get enough to get this private care and then bring his health and sanity all the way back up to max because right now he's at three health and four sanity. 
Mark has a current influence of three, his beginning total of two, and he has that modifier of one that he improved it. And I'd like to get, would really like to get two successes here, but we only got one. Now I got one success so I can get the delivery service, but I'm going to go ahead and take a risk and take on a bank loan to get two more successes from Mark. So I need to get a debt condition. There we go. So I'll give this debt condition over there to Mark Harrigan. I will pick up the delivery service and I'm also going to take the private care. Now with the delivery service When you gain this card, immediately give any number of item possessions to another investigator in any space, then discard this card. And then the private care. When you gain this card, immediately recover all health and sanity, then discard this card. So for the delivery service, I'm going to take this item off a of mark, the bandages. I'm going to send them over to Jim Culver because Jim is always right next to that hound lately so that hound may come over and come after him and Jim only has three health so we want to protect Jim from becoming incapacitated physically by losing all his health and that bandage can help reduce any damage he takes by two and then with the private care Mark will come back up to eight health and for sanity. For his second action we're going to move him out of Rome and into London so we can hopefully close this blue gate because it's up next on the omen track which will move our doom track and again these red gates aren't much of a threat right now. That'll take care of our player actions for this turn. We need to add two items to the reserve since we emptied it out. The first one is a wireless report that cost one when you gain this card, immediately give any number of clues to any to another investigator in any space. That can come in really handy. We might be able to send some clues over to somebody that's close to Tunguska. And then the next item is the hired muscle for two. He's an ally that gains plus one strength. And then you can reroll one die when resolving a strength test. Those are both two pretty good items that are in the reserve that are available. And now for our, our encounters phase, we start with Norman. He's in that city space. The syndicate is engaged in a gang war with local thugs and is under intense legal scrutiny. You try to trade your political clout for assistance, test influence. Norman only has an influence of one, but at least he has the blessed condition, so it's a 50-50 shot that he's going to make it. And he does. Thanks to our blessed condition, that is a success. If you pass, gain one service asset from the reserve, or one random service asset from the deck. There is only one service asset in the reserve. These are items, trinkets, and allies. So the only thing we can gain is the wireless report. Which it says when we gain this card, we immediately give any number of clues to an investigator in another space. Norman currently has one clue. And I'm going to keep it. So his number of clues he's going to give to an investigator is zero. We'll draw another card to fit that space in the reserve. And it is the pocket watch. It's a trinket. 
And with this you cannot become delayed unless you choose to. So that item will go into the reserve for possible purchase also. And that will end Norman's encounter. Akachi is in Istanbul for her encounter. Professor Azop at the Topkapi Topkapi Museum is not easily impressed. Only serious scholars can earn his respect. Need to do a lore check. Akachi needs to do a lore check. She has a lore of three and she also has the arcane scholar. It gives her an additional lore and then we can reroll one die when resolving a lore test. Akachi gets to roll four dice and can reroll one if necessary. And she has a success. If you pass, he offers you any help the Institute can provide. Improve influence. Akachi has a current influence of two, so she will get to improve it an additional one to have a total influence of three. You attend a reading by Edward Pickman Derby. Oh, that must, he must be on a book tour from his book Azathoth and Other Horrors and ask him about the occult. Jim's gonna have to try an influence test now when speaking with Edward Pickman Derby. Jim has an influence of three and he also has a personal assistant that will allow him to gain an additional influence and then we can re-roll a die when resolving an influence test. Jim gets to roll four dice to see if he can get any information of our good author. And he has one success. If you pass, gain this clue. We get to gain that clue. Mark will have his encounter here with the cultist. And the cultist is going to get used according to the ancient one sheet. We'll have to do a will test of one. And then after resolving the will test, I will lose one health and defeat the monster. Mark has a will of five and is testing against the cultist's will test of one. Has one success so he will not lose any any sanity but will lose one health. Mark defeated the cultist, lost one health because of it, and is down to seven total health. But since he defeated all the monsters on the space with the gate, he can go ahead and have an encounter in the other world to see what happens. Mark sees into the future. You find yourself in a familiar city, but there's no electricity. The only light comes from the greenish moon. The only sound is distant screaming. You can feel your reason beginning you can feel your reason being overrun by fear. Do a will test. Mark's trying to overcome his fear with a will of five. And has two successes. Resisting the urge to panic, you find a large metal and glass machine that has electricity sparking across its surface. You try to learn how to operate the device. You need to do a lore test. It's going to be a tough test for Mark. He only has a lore one. This is not his strong suit. And he was unable to make it. I'm going to use Mark's clue token to get a shot at re-rolling. Oh! Same result. He failed. Mark failed, so he's going to receive an electrical shock 
and lose two health. He loses two more health and that takes him down from seven to five total. And that will end the player encounter phase. Now it's time for our mythos. And the omen track will move. The omen track moves to the blue gate symbol, which we have one blue gate open. Because of that one blue gate, we'll move one step closer to Doom, down to eight. Next, we have the Reckoning effect that we'll have to deal with. First, we have to deal with the Reckoning effect of the monsters on the game board. We got the Hound of Tindalos. So we're going to move it to the nearest space, containing an Investigator, which of course is Jim and immediately have an encounter with it. First we have to do our will test. The Hound of Tindalos has a will test of two. Jim has a will of three. And is successful for one, so Jim will lose one sanity. That brings him down to two. Next, we will do the strength test. Jim has a strength of two, but investigators on his space get to roll one additional die due to the passive effect on his card. The strength test is at a negative one against the Hound of Tindalos that has a damage of three. He has one success and will lose two health. The Hound is back in place. This time Jim was able to at least do one damage to it, so the Hound is wounded. And thanks to the bandages that were special delivered over to Jim, I can discard this card to prevent an investigator on your space from losing up to two health. So instead of two health, Jim is not going to lose any health, which is good because he only had three left. He would have been down to one, and that would have been a bad situation to be in because any little thing could have caused him to succumb to his injuries. Next we have the Serpent People. Got to roll one die. On a one or a two, the nearest investigator moves one space toward the monster. This is going to affect Jim if he has to move. Anything but a one or a two and he gets to stay where he is. And that's a six. The Serpent People do not draw Jim towards them. Next we have our Shogoth that's over there in Tunguska has a reckoning symbol. This monster recovers all health. And luckily for us, it didn't have any wounds on it. So nothing really happens there. The cultist here has a reckoning symbol on it also, but there is nothing on the Ancient One sheet for that monster to do. Next, we would do the Ancient One sheet, so there's nothing on there. And then we have the Mythos cards in play, which again is the Secrets of the Past. Search the Expedition Encounter deck for each card corresponding to the active expedition and return those cards to the game box. And then if the Expedition deck is empty, that would be the end of the game. The current Expedition is in Tunguska. We have our expedition deck. So anything that has to do with Tunguska comes out. And our new expedition location will be at the pyramids. I moved the current expedition from Tunguska to here in the pyramids. And lastly for our reckoning we have to deal with player effects. First up is Norman Withers with his blessed condition. He has to roll a die. On a one or a two 
he will lose his blessed condition. We want anything but a one or a two. Good. He keeps to keep his blessed condition. Akachi didn't have anything to worry about. Jim has his hallucinations to deal with and we'll have to do a will test. Jim has a will of three. Is he going to be able to resist these hallucinations? Yes. Two successes for Jim. And our last player, Mark Harrigan, has his debt condition. Some men have come to collect your debt. Hitmen, you see, ne you see now that it was no ordinary bank you borrowed from. Some armed men confront you and demand that you repay what you owe. Gonna have to take a strength test, Mark. Mark has a strength of four. He can't use his 38 revolver because this is not a combat encounter. But his chances are still okay. Oh no, Mark was not able to fend off those hitmen. The hitmen take Mark out back and beat him senseless. He's going to lose three health. Then discard this card. So the debt condition is gone, but he lost three health and then takes Mark down to two total health. Lastly, we have to spawn a new gate which we know is a red one in Shanghai. So this new gate appears in Shanghai and with it coming out of the gate is a Bayaki. That buy a key comes flying out of the gate in Shanghai. Sweating and exhausted, you stop to rest in what little shade you can find. You've already heard stories of this heat wave claiming the lives of sick or elderly individuals. You fear that if you keep going at this pace, you might fall victim to it as well. A heat wave singes the globe. Each investigator loses three health unless he becomes delayed. Wow. That is punishing. Norman, Jim, and Mark all have three health or less. I don't want them to die, so Norman becomes delayed. Jim with the Hound of Tindalos becomes delayed. Mark in London will become delayed. And Akachi has two, five health. Do I want to take her down to two to have one investigator that I can move in the next round? Yeah. I'll go ahead and Ah, oh, this hurts. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let her take the damage so I have at least one investigator in the next turn that I can move somewhere or do something with. That was a really painful turn. The heat waves swept across the globe and knocked everybody down. So they are gonna have to stay in place for their next turn. We still have everything going on out there. This secret to the past is probably only a few reckonings away from ending the game for us. Our doom is down to eight. We still need to get up there and solve that mystery, but there's a couple of monsters in the way. We have a lot to do still. Please join me in the next turn, which should be a short one, because we have three investigators that are just going to stand up and take no other action during their turn. But I really hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.